What's going on, Knucklehead? Shecam Gaming here with another LEGO Legacies unboxed video for you. And today is the day. They are finally here, the Space Update Patch Notes. People on Discord have been going crazy. So much thirst for these patch notes. And they are finally here. So much so that I actually decided to forego Free to Play Friday today in order to cover these patch notes because I have literally content out the wazoo. There is going to be videos pretty much every day for the next probably week or so because I still have a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, to date right now, I have covered Kartofsky and Kelvin reworks and that is it. And both those videos were very successful. People really seem to like that Kelvin video. I think somebody said this is the, the video that Kelvin needed and deserved. So. That was really cool, but let's dive right into these patch notes because this is pretty dense and there's a lot of stuff that I'm not going to go too in-depth to, but I'm definitely going to kind of go over the patch notes with you. Uh, so it basically says like the space update is here. It's going to give us a snapshot of all the new minifigures, the reworks, some new PvP payout challenges, the gear and level increase. Apparently there's been some Brickspedition improvements and something called a booster pass, which I'm actually pretty excited, will help those newer players that don't want to be super whales kind of get into the game a little bit better. So what you should be expecting with space is a lot of plug and play viability. You know, I've seen all the reworks. I'm sure you guys have all seen them by now. Basically any of those space units, maybe not the Blacktron guys, are pretty much like plug and play, play solo or duo characters. Probably Blacktron if you're playing the duo. But, you know, space by itself is going to be good. And similar to Ghostbusters, they're going to help out a lot of different other synergies. Uh, mostly chill and techie. But I think space on its own will also be viable. And you could also plug and play these characters. I I'm thinking you're going to see Kelvin on just regular meta teams right now anyway. So, I'll, I'll behold Kelvin. So the first thing I want to really go over here is the events. So there's going to be a brand new Brick Space event spoke focused around both Blacktron minifigures. So Dwayne and, uh, what's his name? And Quincy, Dwayne and Quincy. And it's going to be three chapters. So kind of similar to like we just did with the Ghostbuster event. And it's kind of cool because a lot, Dwayne is farmable in other places. So that's, you know, you're not wailing on Dwayne, uh, so to speak. Uh, there's three chapters. You can unlock both of them and the Alpha Centurion Outpost. It's a pretty cool looking set. I think it's going to work really well with them. Clockwork Robot finally coming. Brand new unboxed event. So I'm kind of excited for that. Uh, you know, this is you know this is where I'm at with the game. Like I wailed on Bucks and I wailed on Winston because I kind of want to go city at some point. So I'm kind of going to have to skip the techie and chill metas. Uh, which stinks because they both look really, really good. But thank you, Tibster, because I have Tibster vision, so I will definitely be able to do you guys lots of videos on them. Um, and I think uh, Clockwork, there was a rework for Clockwork. I think it's, a, pretty sure it was a rework. I'll double check what it used to be. But uh, she actually looks really, really good. I don't know why I keep calling it free. Uh, and lastly, there is finally going to be a community calendar, and it's gonna outline what events, timed quests, and dailies will be happening for a whole month. So you can actually start to plan out, okay, I wanna level these guys up, but I'm gonna save up for Mr. Moneybags, right? Stuff like that. Um, also, okay, I know when the Woo event is coming, so, okay, I know I have this much time to get my pirates to five star or six star, so I could start farming, you know, Darwin or whoever else you need to, to farm up. So that's really actually super helpful. Uh, because when I really got into the game, like everybody was just talking about the Woo event, but we had no idea when it was coming. And I was extremely fortunate that I was managed to five star my Redbeard on the very last like 12 hours of the event. So <laughs> I got very lucky to unlock Master Woo this time around. And they're going to knock off your space boots. Uh, new minifigures. So there's actually a lot of new minifigures coming out into the game. Uh, Blacktron Quincy. Someone I've known about for a while, but uh, you know, they actually ch changed, a, I think uh, briefly from what I saw from the data mine, but the data mine was actually pretty accurate for Quincy. Clockwork Robot, uh, I believe it was a rework. If not, it's just, she's coming in the game. I'm not, I wasn't too familiar what the unit used to do before. You know, I don't really look at units that aren't in the game too much, uh, but from looking at the kit, she, Clockwork Robot looks pretty solid. And Spaceman Jen. 
one of the best units in the game already. Will be, I, will, I can say that, will be one of the best units in the game. Uh, and she's got the techie tag. Techie meta is coming. Look at these double techies, Clockwork Robot and Spaceman Gens. I thought it was Gen Slate, but I guess it turned into Gens. And the Alpha Centurion Outpost, so a brand new set, new space set they're bringing into the game. God knows they needed it, and I think this is the last space set that is in the um, in the in their little community thing. I'm going to double check that. But, you know, it provides powerful buffs, and it does a lot of disrupting for... Uh, enemies who use buffs as well, which the Black Trons kind of do. But Spaceman Jens can't wait to do my video on her. She's so good. And minifigures have now been added to stores. So Spooky Girl is in the guild shop and Scarlet is in the arena shop. That is big. Scarlet as an ar that's that's a great arena farm right there. Scarlet going in the arena farm. I'm not sure if anybody's coming out of the arena shop. Maybe Dwayne. Uh, but Scarlet, start farming Scarlet. There's, you now no longer need to worry about farming Valiant. Um, you know, I always hated telling new players, farm Valiant in your arena shop because I know why he was useful. And, you know, obviously for pirates and gold and you needed him. But, like, he just, it, Scarlet is way better. And there's no point in running Valiant anymore in the meta, I feel like, if you have Scarlet. And now, finally, those people who were stuck can get Scarlet and the people new in the game can get Scarlet. You don't really need to worry about farming up Valiant. You can, he's still a great unit, but I just felt like you never needed him with Scarlet. Hank is in the Brickspedition shop. That's a tough farm, probably. That stinks because he's gonna be really hard to get. And Yorick is in the gem shop. So Yorick is still gonna be pay to play, but they move Zombie to Monolith Waste 4.2. So I think that there was nothing in there. So I'm going to have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure that was an empty node. Uh, and Lego house tiles are now in the guild shop. So the guild shop, you can get Lego house tiles, you can get Spooky Girl. I'm still farming Storm in the guild shop, but you know, it is what it is. And then there was a Poppy rework. I was actually going to do Poppy rework for this free-to-play Friday. I was having a special guest on, but things didn't work out with filming. Some stuff came up. We're gonna try to shoot to get it up for next week's Free to Play Friday. So that's another reason why I didn't have a Free to Play Friday video for you guys this week. But I did already film and record all of the space reworks. So that's good. And speaking of space reworks, there are six units who got space reworks. We have Locust, we'll be covering him soon. Black Tron Twain. Gorwell, really, it wasn't really a rework on Gorwell. They just kind of buffed one of her abilities. Uh, but I do have a short video that'll be coming out for that. Kartofsky, I just did a video on him two days ago. Captain Cold, I believe his video will be coming out tomorrow or Sunday. And Dr. Kelvin, just did my video for her yesterday. Dr. Kelvin is... Kartofsky is dirty, and I talked about this in the video what I did for Kartowski, that he really is being slept on because he's behind the paywall. Uh, Locust obviously got a good little buff with his rework, but I think Cold and Kelvin are really gonna shine through, and I think that Chill team is going to, I think you're, post this update, you're going to see a lot of viability in that Chill team, and you're gonna start to see them kind of pushing things around in the, in the arena. That's just my prediction. I do think that Techie is on the rise, but Techie's gonna take a little bit more time. Gen Slate's probably gonna be a really slow farm. We still gotta wait for the unboxed event. Kartofsky's still super pay to play. So Techie's not gonna be, Techie's gonna kinda be like Spooky. Like, yes, it can run you. You can run the gauntlet with Spooky, but most people won't because Will is behind the paywall. But I think Chill's gonna kinda be like Bucks. Like, you're gonna run the gauntlet with Chill. That's just my opinion on it. But you know what, I've been wrong a lot. And then there's this thing called the Booster Pass. So they've been getting a lot of feedback on the more expensive and larger packs being featured to the newer players. And now they're introducing a better way to boost your progression on a daily basis. So for a smaller cost, so probably like, you know, 50, 80, 90 billion dollars, you know, in game law, kidding. But for a smaller cost, you'll get a 14 day pass that amplifies the rewards you've gotten from your daily quests and gives you access to a daily premium pack. So that's pretty cool. You get a premium pack every day for, you get 14 premium packs for this uh, and you get boosted rewards. 
So, I mean, a smaller cross is, means it's at least less than a hundred dollars. So that's good. I'm curious to see what that is. Cause if it's like a $20 thing, okay, I, I could probably do that once or twice. You know, you're getting 14 premium packs. I wouldn't, wouldn't be opposed to that if I'm a, if I'm a player, especially a newer player, just trying to catch up. I, I think that I really do actually like this. I think it's a viable, it's another way for them to get in those micro transactions. Like a while ago, they added a little like, hey, get some gold for like five bucks or like three bucks for the gold and six bucks for the gold and the elixir. It's like, I, I, you know, I put some money into those. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say I didn't uh, because they were good little micro transactions. It's a good move for game loft. And it's kind of good for the players because if you're smart, you know, you could just budget your money and say, hey, I want to put a little bit of money into this game every every month or every couple of weeks. That it really doesn't hurt as much as like a new figure coming out and you're dropping like $300 on it. And I like this, a goal reminder. So you're going to keep your eyes on the prize here. It's actually going to tell you what goals you got to come up to complete your daily quest. Uh, you know, for me, it's not that big a deal. I make sure to complete my dailies every day. Uh, but for some players who aren't kind of on top of that, it's a nice little add-on. It's a quality of life thing that they're that they're throwing on there. And there's other new changes and improvements. The PvP in Arena is probably the biggest one. Uh, it used to like just happen at one time. So for me, it, like it always happened at eight o'clock at night. And like I'm doing stuff, you know, I have a life, so I'm not on there. Like I, I've never had a number one spot payout but I've been in the number one spot so many times. So instead of paying out at eight o'clock at night universally, it's gonna be like my, it'll pay out a certain time in my time zone so that I can be like, hey, let me go on at a reasonable time and snipe. And I don't have everybody sniping at the same time. So like I can get a payout for the number one spot and somebody else can get a payout for the number one spot the same day, just in different time zones. I think this is actually a really, really cool thing. I like the level 60 gear seven increase. I don't like that. I wish that all of the experience I've gained from level 50 till now, they kind of paid me back and kept track of that and that counted for level 60. It hasn't said anything about that happening. So I feel like all of the experience I've gained from farming and doing my dailies, I'm not actually gonna get that experience. So that kind of ticks me off a little bit. But, you know, it is what it is. And Gear 7, that sounds pretty cool too. We already talked about that in the Q&A video I did a little while ago. And there's also been adjustments made to the difficulty of Brickspedition. Uh, about time. Seriously. Uh, w what they really need to adjust is the payout. Uh, but the difficulty generator, it's like, it's about time. It was getting ridiculous. It was getting really ridiculous. Those... It shouldn't be Ninjago every seventh day. Because it's just, an, you know, you want to do it once in a while and make it unwinnable for someone that week. But if I got to do it every week, it's like, you know, what am I doing? I have to buy Ghostbusters to beat Brickspedition easily and get those events. Granted, I did get all those events cleared, but it was, I got lucky with the, you know, buff immunity. And then there were some bug fix fixes. Winston, they fixed his little Hardy thing, so he now gives Hardy to all the Ghostbuster figures from his Ready for Anything. And applied filter to your minifig collection will stay applied. So you ever go like, oh, I wanna check out my space units, and then you go look at Locus, and then you go back, and it goes back to all the units. That's annoying, and it always had annoyed me, so now they fix that. So now if I go, oh, let me look at my space units, and I go look at Locus, and then I go back, and it's still my space units. So that's pretty cool. And they fixed Basil's to the Magic Dragon. It's still going to extend the length of the Time Bomb debuffs. And that's it. That's pretty much all I got for you today, Knuckleheads. Please remember to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that little bell for some notifications, and as always, remember to knuckle up. She blocked me on Instagram Snapchat, I don't give a damn about that I can see your face, still feel the same I don't feel the need to forget your name